Once again, I want to say thank you for making ZSportsLounge.com your choice for clicking on and the host of affiliates that keep sending our channel all across this great world, the military bases that send texts. We're going to go right back to Western Michigan University, talk to head football coach, Coach Bill Cubic. Coach, thank you. Well, great to talk to you. Coach, we had a lot of nice fans that talked very highly about you, your program. A lot of them actually had a chance to meet you at some of the meet and greets you have in the program. Um it must be an awesome place to have that alumni support and the fan support that you have. Yeah, this is a great university, and I think there are people that are really passionate about Western uh, Western football. So uh, it really is great getting around the state and talk to some people about the passion we have, and I think that people really respect the, the right things we're doing here, both on and off the field. Absolutely. Now, we're going to back up real quickly. We had a chance to talk to you before the Michigan game. And I think what was against Western was the demons, the pressures, the frustration of Rich Rodriguez and the Michigan guys. You weren't just playing against Michigan. You were playing against a just a monster that had to break loose. Unfortunately, you were in the way of that program. The speed factor, but judging by how Rodriguez reacted after the game, I think I was right on board with my, my feelings on um, the purging of those demons at Michigan. Yeah, I think that, you know, I think there was a lot of things that were going on during that week, and I think those people decided that they wanted to, uh, uh, you know, they, they're the kids, and they, they just ride around, you know, and it's, it really is about the kids. It's, uh, you know, there's sometimes uh, we get all caught up in our little world, but, uh, you know, they, they want to go out there and they want to win. They want to do a good job, and they do. They came out and they took care of the football, and they played well, and, uh, you know, kudos to them. And we, you know, we played okay. Uh, you know, we didn't play as good as we, as we should have, but at the same time, we give all the credit to Michigan. You know, Coach, that's a class act statement, what you just said there, is that absolutely. Um, I could sit there and argue about um, offensive penalties that weren't called, um, that were that should have been in your favor for Michigan on a couple storing drives where they're blocking in the back, but I think every game has those little nick and tucks that all fans can pick apart. Um, what I thought you guys did awesome on is regrouping and going into Indiana. Now, who were those guys, the heroes at the Indiana, that really learned from that Michigan game? Well, I think I think our wide got a little bit better, uh, which we're really young there. Uh, I thought Tim played better, and, you know, Tim's coming off that knee injury, and I think it's, uh, uh, you know, it just takes a little bit of time. You know, we talk about Tom Brady being, you know, if he's ready after, you know, 12, 13 months, and we're asking Tim to do it in seven months. Uh, so I think he I think he got better. I think uh, some of our kids uh, defensively got better. Uh, de- defensive front, I think they pushed us around there. Um, you know, and we did have some guys regress, and I think that kind of hurt us. Um, but we got better. Uh, we had a chance to win the game, even though we didn't play real well. Absolutely, Coach. When you look at it, I think a lot of us in the lounge were watching that game and clicking over because every Saturday, I think everybody's watching like 100 different games. Um, they get the opportunity just to watch you guys come back and have a chance to go down the stretch and really learn. Now, Coach, when you have students um, that come to your campus, whether they're juniors or sophomores, um, they're looking at the game as a game of football. But when you step into Michigan, that giant new stadium where they spent billions of dollars um, revamping it, it's got to be something that a lot of the students take back. Even though they played on big campuses, they've got to look at that 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 big house and then back into Indiana. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, I think it, 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 both those uh, schools have done a great job at the facilities. And uh, Indiana structure is just, uh, I mean, and what a big difference they've made there. And I think when you do that to uh, your student athletes, I think they show the commitment that, it, that uh, the administration and, and the community at large are, uh, are taking part, that they want to make sure that that program gets better. Um, you know, and we've done here the same thing at Western Michigan. We got a great indoor, we got a nice field out there, we got great coaching offices and tech, uh, you know, the tech uh, computers and whatever we're using here. So, um, you know, I think the kids just feel a whole lot better when you do little nice things for them. And, you know, Michigan's got a lot of money, so. Uh, you know, those will be a little more dramatic, but they're pretty nice <laughs> here, too. Absolutely. Coach, You now, when you had a home game against Miami, you talk about having the the frustration of the fighters, the athletes getting on board. I mean, it was a nice whooping. I'm sure it felt good on the sideline when the buzzer went off. Yeah, it did. It's, uh, you know, the, the, uh, it, it's good and bad. Uh, you know, we jumped ahead of 48-6, to six and I think we got a little lax there. And, uh, they came back there, and they, uh, they scored 20 points, and... Uh, the last three drive, and that's something you know we don't want to do. And I think we got to finish, but I think it's also a good uh, rallying point and a good uh, teaching tool for our kids. And I understand they got to play a full 60 minutes. So uh, a lot of good came out of the game, and you know we just got to keep on improving and get ourselves better this week. And and then uh, after this week, then we got uh, you know we got uh, really a tough conference. Uh, 
a stretch there that we got to uh, have to be tough on. Yeah, you know, look, you're looking at your lineup. Obviously, Hofstra as a one double A is is a no joke, but you've got to take it seriously. But it is a home game. You historically have been very good against it. Then you go right into Northern Toledo, who's got a brand new head coach. Central Michigan had a juggernaut, and Buffalo has been written about on every publication. And then you finish off down the stretch with Michigan State. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, you've got a lot on your plate heading into this, but, uh, you know, having that win against Miami, I think, set the tone for the rest of the year for y'all. Yeah, I do. I think it's, uh, you know, it's a first conference win. I thought we went out there, we did a lot of good things. Our kicking game got us in a really good position to score. Our defense set up some scores and scored one themselves. And our offense, every opportunity they had, they, they had a short field. They, uh, they scored all but one time. So, um, you know, a lot of good things out there. And, uh, you know, like I said, this season, it's going to be a little bit, it's a marathon. You know, we just got to keep on plugging along. And sometimes kids, uh, you know, feel that they, uh, okay, I could take this week off. I could take that, that week, that day off. And it just doesn't work that way. And that's a constant battle as coaches of what we have to do to continually get our kids to improve each day. Yeah, is managing that emotion of the students. That's, the I think, the hardest part of your job. You work so hard getting involved during the week. When it's game day, it really comes down to the students. Are they mentally prepared? And when you're on the sideline, um, sometimes you're in the zone and you can capitalize. Other times you think you're in the zone and they're not. How much on the sideline do you walk over and talk to a kid that's off to get him get his head back in? What are kind of things you tell them um, from the sideline? Well, it, it is. It, uh, you know, because uh, the, the game's short. Uh, it's not like you can fix it tomorrow. I mean, during the game, that's your that's your final exam, and uh, you know, you get, you get twelve of them. Hopefully, you get uh, fourteen of them. So we, you know, you, you, you just uh, at that time you got to get the kids, and some kids react a little bit different, and maybe some other kids some guys are a little bit more mentally tougher than some other kids so you know if your kicker's uh, not kicking the ball real well they go up to them and then uh, start yelling screen that's probably not a real good thing you know, just, <laughs> yeah just tell them you know, get back to your basic fundamentals and you'll be you'll be okay and uh, hopefully then next time out there they go to fundamentals and it works and you know they can feel like being in that zone like you talked about uh but that that's hard for uh, for college kids to understand what they're going to do each and every uh time they go back out there and what the importance of every play is Absolutely. Now, you know what's nice to see, too, Coach, before we let you go, is the national media has really done a better job, not great, but a better job, on really understanding and going back to the fact that these are just young teenagers, most of them. Some are in their early 20s. These are young kids who have a whole host of issues, let alone academics and social, that can enter into a playing game at any point in time. Um, and you know what? If a kid plays bad, it's so hard as a fan just to embrace it. But you see the media now where they're not criticizing these kids, and they are just kids. Um, it's got to make you feel good that they're not you know, trying to take their heads off every time they make a mistake. Yeah, I actually think it's gotten better. You know, I think sometimes the Internet, you know, when people hide behind them, you, know, you know, those names, I think that that's probably the worst part. But I think the media does a really good job because – there is. I mean, they, you know, a kid could go to bed Friday night and you know, maybe have to worry about what's happening in the back at home. Uh, you know, with uh, maybe mom or dad or brother or sister, you know, uh, just failed a test, you know, and I'm concerned about that. There's so many emotions going on with these guys. They're going through, they're not full out. You know, it's not, they, they're spending all the time with football. So, you know, I, and I do, I think the media does really a good job of understanding of what we got, uh, of what these kids are going through. And really, nobody really knows what they're going through. Uh, and, you know, the closest is probably the coach and, and, and of course the, the, the player himself so uh, you know, we, we go out we do the best we can at that point there and then uh, you know if it's not good enough then we just got to you know, just like Michigan and, and yeah it was good enough but let's get better and we'll just keep on uh, figuring out ways to win. Absolutely coach thanks for taking time with us today as always you're one of our favorite stops we got the Twitter link on our site to make sure people can keep track of everything going on at Western. Oh I appreciate both for all your time. Absolutely. Coach Bill Cubitt, Western Michigan University. Um, they're still on board to do great things in the MAC and head to a major bowl, and I know their fans are excited. Coach, you have a good day. All right. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Absolutely.